Maranatha, everyone. This is Pastor Jed, and this is another edition of my weekly video blog, Apologetics in Prophecy, where we like to take current events, put them through an apologetical and biblical lens to see just how close we are to the return of our Lord. This week, I asked the question, which Jesus are you waiting for? We all know that we are waiting for the return of Christ, and we see the signs around us as we every week delve into the current events and news and see that we are very on the very threshold of the return of Christ for the church, for the rapture of the church. And we know, though, that when asked about that by his disciples at the Olivet Discourse, Jesus said to them right away before he said anything about the signs that would be seen right before his return, he would say, take heed that no one be deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. And of course, Paul writing to the second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 11, verses 3 through 4, offered this warning to them and to us today. But I fear lest, how some, lest somehow the serpent, this would be Satan, deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Jesus Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom, you have not, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit than which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. We're living in a, a, a very interesting time where people that are followers of Christ are being tempted and pressured into um, changing the beliefs by the culture of what kind of the actually character of Jesus and actually the type of Christianity that we worship. And there are different Jesuses out there. There are different Jesuses that are deceiving the world. And so I ask you again, which Jesus are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the prosperity Jesus? The Jesus that you come to and offer your life to only if he gives you health and gives you wealth and gives you great prosperity and power and those things that your flesh desires. There are those on TV that preach that kind of Jesus, that say that if you're not healthy and wealthy, that Jesus is not blessing you. That is not the Jesus of the Bible, and it is not the Jesus that I am waiting to return. But is that the Jesus you're waiting for? Is it the liberal Jesus that you're waiting for? The one that's okay with your lifestyle and the, the sinful choices that you're making with your life? The one that culture and the current administration of our government is trying to push towards us that we should evolve and start accepting different things that the Bible calls sin as being okay with Jesus. Is, G are you, is it a liberal Jesus that you're waiting for? Is it a Jesus that's going to be okay when he returns to see what kind of life you're living? What about a less than God Jesus? There are many uh, cults that are out there that teach that Jesus was not God and that he is just a, a good teacher and a man, and he didn't really, he wasn't really all God. Uh, we had a famous politician recently just say that, that Jesus was not a, that Jesus was a fallen person and made mistakes when he walked this earth, and we know that is a heresy and not true. So I ask you, which Jesus are you waiting for? Because the world right now is looking for an earthly Messiah. Is that the Jesus that you're looking for? One that is going to fix all your problems here on earth? The one that is going to come and solve all the division that we see in our country? The one that's going to solve your problems with health, your problems financially, the problems with your family and your problems emotionally? Is that the Messiah that you're looking for? Because there is going to come a Messiah that's exactly what you want. And we know that he's coming because in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, we read, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, and all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe 
the lie. And so this Messiah is going to come on the scene and he's going to be smooth talking. He's going to be charismatic. He's going to be popular and he's going to seem to have all the answers to the things that are plaguing you today. He's going to seem like the one that we should put our faith and trust in. He's the one who's going to help us through these problems that we're going through. And we know that that person, that Messiah, the Bible calls the Antichrist. And it's not Antichrist as the opposite of Christ. It's Antichrist because the world is going to choose him instead of Christ. He is the one that opposes Christ. And he's the one that people are going to choose instead of of a relationship with Christ. It's the Messiah that they've been hoping for. The only problem though, is he's going to deceive them. It says in Revelation chapter 13, verses three and four, and I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this person's going to come on the scene. He's going to have all the answers. He's going to seem miraculous in his actions. He's even going to somehow um, make it look like he had came back from the dead, just like Jesus did. And people are going to wonder after him and actually worship him because he is going to say and deliver to them uh, an idea that he has all the answers for them. He will be the earthly Messiah that many of you, in, maybe in your ignorance, maybe in just uh, pressure from the, the culture around you, have decided that that's the Messiah that you're waiting for. But you need to understand that that is a deceptive Messiah. That is not the true Messiah. It's not the Messiah who came the first time, who lived, who was born of a virgin and lived a sinless life, who lived a perfect sinless life for one purpose. And that one purpose was to die, to die on a brutal cross, to take upon himself punishment that no one could even imagine, being beat beyond recognition by Roman soldiers, being dragged before the masses while they, shoot, they shout, crucify him, crucify him, made to carry the cross to the place of his cruci to place of his execution where crucifixion where he would be nailed to this cross and dropped into a hole on a beam where he would suffer some of the most cruelest torture ever invented by man where he would actually die and that he would be left for dead by the masses it says that he was he was uh, that no one even esteemed him and that he would be left there and taken down off that cross and put in a tomb where the stone would be rolled against it where he would he would be ultimately left to just rot away but we know that he had a purpose that there was a, a, a something that he needed to accomplish and that was when he was dying on that cross he was paying for the penalty of our sins because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See, we, as humans, when we look for an earthly Messiah, we deserve the Messiah that's coming. We deserve this lawless one that's coming because we have rejected God, decided to go our own way and live according to our own desires and our own lusts of the flesh. And we are getting what we deserve when the Antichrist comes on the scene not realizing that Jesus Christ, after he was left in that tomb, rose again from the dead in victory over sin and death, that he ascended and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for those who have put their faith and trust in them. And then at one moment, coming in the near future, the Father is gonna tell the Son it's time. And the Son is going to descend from heaven in the clouds and with the shout, of, and the, the blow of a trumpet and the shout of an archangel, those that are, uh, those that are dead in Christ will rise first and those that will, are alive and remain on the earth, those that have put our faith and trust in the real Messiah, the biblical Jesus that died for our sins and didn't leave us that way, will catch us up together to be with those that rose first and we will forever be with the Lord. That's the Jesus that we're waiting for. And that's the Jesus that's going to return at any moment to catch his church away. 
The signs are in place. The deception has already begun. The world is seeking this Messiah. Everyone is seeking for this leader, and this leader is going to come on the scene. It is very soon, and we need to make sure that we're following the right Jesus, the Jesus that died a horrible, bloody death on the cross because we deserve that punishment. And he did it in our place for our sinful nature and the sins that we've committed in, in ignorance and in, in just plain you know, iniquity when we did it on purpose. He, is, he died for those sins and that he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. For those that have really put their faith and trust in Jesus, we have victory over those sinful uh, lifestyles. When Jesus comes again, it's going to be, he's going to see us as blameless and washed in his blood. We are the bride of Christ and he's coming to retrieve us soon. So I ask you again, which Jesus are you waiting for? Is it the earthly, because there's only two that are coming. The one that's coming first is Jesus Christ coming to retrieve his bride from the earth before seven years of hell is unleashed upon this earth. And there'll rise another Messiah then for those that are left behind. And that will be the earthly Messiah, the lawless one, the Antichrist, who will deceive and fool the whole world that he is the Messiah, the instead of Christ in opposition to Christ. And he will cause everyone to worship him. But those that take that mark will be doomed for eternity in the lake of fire. But there is a way that you can escape the, the, the deception of this lawless one. And that is by putting your faith and trust in Christ today. That you would get on your knees and realize that you're a sinner. That the lifestyle that you choose to live, and maybe you've been worshiping the wrong Jesus and you need to repent from the prosperity Jesus or the liberal Jesus or the less than God Jesus. And you need to come at the feet of the real Jesus, the God man, the one who died for your sins and beg him to forgive you of those sins and ask and realize and recognize that the finished work that he did on the cross for you paid for those sins in full past, present and future and ask him to wash you clean because he will not leave you as you are. You will find that there'll be a change in your life and that God will wash you of those sins that you've been struggling with and give you victory over them according to the Spirit of God that now lives in you. If you do that, you'll have, a, you'll have your ticket to come when the first Messiah comes, and you won't be deceived by the second one. And for those of us, we need to examine ourselves, make sure that we're not breaking the second commandment by making a God into our own image, trying to make a Jesus that fits our lifestyle, that fits the way that we want to be, because the culture is going to command us to worship the Jesus that they've created. It's happening now in our government. It's happening now in our culture. It's happening now in our colleges, and it's coming to a church near you. So you need to read your Bible. Make sure that you're following the right Jesus praying that he's changing you and giving you eyes to see and ears to hear the truth of the word of God, that he is coming again to judge this world in righteousness, and that only those that have been washed by his blood and, have the, and, and are cleansed with his blood and covered by him will be able to stand in that day. And so, Lord, I just, I just want to encourage you all to continue on to Take a stand now while we can for the real Jesus. Proclaim him, preach him, live for him, tell your family because the time is short. We know, we see the clock ticking. We know the end is near and we know Jesus is coming again. So with that said, I'm gonna wish you all a good weekend. Thank you for watching. God bless you in the name of Jesus. And as we always end with the same way we start, Maranatha.